morning on this Good Friday. Glad to have you here with us for our daily devotions on this on this Good Friday morning. Um, as I as I said in my post, uh, it's about this time, um, time wise. I mean, obviously, obviously Jerusalem is on the other side of the world, so the time is is completely different. Mushtaq has a better feel for us that than we do, or praise or. Um, Azika, but um, it's it's 8.30 now, Central Time. I know some of you are on Eastern over there in Michigan, but it's around the, it's around the third hour um, uh, that Jesus is taken uh, to Calvary. Um, so Jesus would be Simon of Cyrene carrying the cross behind him would be walking to Calvary right now bleeding from the stripes on his back from the flogging, suffering for you and doing it willingly, knowing that his, his suffering will bring, around, or bring about your salvation through him, in him, by him. I gotta be a little bit somber on Good Friday, right? This is... Um, in, in my mind, in my mind, this week, in these four days, Monday, th Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, Sat Holy Saturday, and Easter morning are the most important days to our faith. Christmas is nice. Christmas is nice. Christmas is fun. And certainly in order to have these days, Jesus had to be born of a woman and take on flesh, true God and true man. But that's not where our salvation comes from. Our salvation is not found in the manger. Our salvation is found on the cross, on Jesus' cross. And today is the day that he will be crucified. Today is the day that he sheds his blood for you, for me. Honestly, for everyone in the entire world, whether they believe it or not, his blood is shed for them. It's just in unbelief, you can't receive the benefit of what Christ does. In unbelief, you can't take hold of what Jesus has done. And therefore, you retain your sin. Your sin is ever upon you. In the case of Christ, when God looks at you at the time of judgment, when you're in Christ, he sees his son. And when the accuser reads the crimes of your life, your iniquities, your trespasses, your sins, Jesus will stand next to you as your advocate and say, the defendant pleads guilty, but I have already served his sentence. It is commuted, passed over. But those who don't have Christ will stand before the judge and the accuser will read the sins of that person, and there will be no defense attorney. There will be no advocate who is Christ. And the judge will find them guilty. And the result of that is eternal death and punishment. Very, very, very serious thing. But a lot of people don't want to take on, but that's sin. Good morning. Let's see who's here with us this morning on Good Friday. Uh, Loretta, good morning to you and Dale. Yeah, we missed the kids last night at church. That was, uh, that was, uh, what was Gail said, sure gonna miss the kids tonight. And, to, and that was last night and tonight and Easter morning. 
but I know they're having fun with you guys. Brenda, good morning, Cloudy, and 44, the high of 46 in Kalamazoo. Well, all right. I hope for your sake that what we have right now doesn't come over there and get you. And we'll come to that in a minute. Michael, good morning. 86 with 100% humidity. There you go. That's Florida. That's Florida. Hot and sticky and wet. A place where you can only cool off by spraying water on you, even though the atmosphere feels like it's all water. I remember it being at Disney, uh, uh, Disney World in Florida um, in... What was it? Was it was about now? I think it was around April, April or May, and uh, it was so hot, so humid, um, and they had places where there were benches under. Um, uh, yeah, but I'm I'm thinking of the type of per pergolas, misters with benches under pergolas and, and misters running, and you'd walk through the mister and the the not. And the mist would land on your skin, and it would be, without getting you totally soaked, it would be refreshing. Huh? Well, there too. I mean, a lot of a lot of water parks use it, but I remember Disney having it. Geraldine and Neil, good morning to you. Glad you're here, Renee. Good morning on this Good Friday to you as well. And there's Bonnie. See, here's here's what we got. We got 19 degrees right now, compared to your 46, Brenda. And it snowed last night. Um, and then it snowed some more, and then it blew. And we had, like a lot of Wisconsin, we had high, high winds last night. Um, almost straight line winds. I was talking to my father on the way home from uh, Harshaw to do Irma's service from Faith to St. Paul. And my dad said the airport at La Crosse was recording, recording winds of 50 miles and higher uh, sustained. Um, I knew the weather service had put out an alert of like 30 miles with gusts. So, yeah, I'm hoping this doesn't get to you. Um, yeah, and our high today is going to be 32 next week. Next week looks like it'll be a little better. I hope. I shouldn't say that because then... Jeannie and Bob, good morning to you guys. There's Glenn. Good morning. Yeah, wintry Friday is right. Uh, oh, I lost my spot. Uh, and uh, Jill and John, good morning to you guys up there in, in the land of Rhinelander. And Debbie, good morning. Oh, you guys will be watching later. Okay. All right. All right. Well, good morning anyway when you when you get there. Uh, and Kathy, good morning, dear. Glad you're here with us too. All right. Let's get into this. If you have a Lutheran service book, well, SB, page 295, Daily Prayer for Individuals and Families, even on Good Friday. That's where we're going to begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our psalm today, Psalm 135, 135, verses 1 through 4 and 8 through 9. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Give praise, O servants of the Lord who stand in the house of the Lord, in the courts of the house of our God. Praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Sing to his name, for it is pleasant. For the Lord has chosen Jacob for himself, Israel as his own possession. He, he it was who struck down the firstborn of Egypt, both of man and beast, who in your midst, O Egypt, sent signs and wonders against Pharaoh and all his servants. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I see that Psalm 51 is a, an additional recommended psalm for today. In my congregations, we'll be speaking Psalm 2, or, yeah, yeah, Psalm, 
Psalm 2, I think, and Psalm 51 responsively as part of the Tenebrae service this evening. Um, our reading comes from the book of Exodus, the 12th chapter. We're continuing on with the plagues here. I know, maybe you'd like to hear uh, of Jesus' crucifixion on Good Friday. You can go to church. Um, I'm sure your pastor will be reading uh, the passion narrative one way or another uh, today at your church. Um, whether you've got a chief service early in the afternoon or you've got the tenebrae service uh, in the afternoon, late afternoon or evening. Or maybe you've got chief service in the, in the, in the later in the day, I, I don't know. Tradition would dictate the chief service around one o'clock and then um, one, somewhere between one and three. And then I think after that time would be the tenebrae service especially if it gets into the evening hours, seven o'clock. That may not be what your pastor does. And you know what? That's okay. It's all right. Let's uh, continue though here. Exodus 12. Uh, we're going to go 12 from, from verse 29 to the end. Then we're going to pick up in chapter 13 uh, and read verses 1 through 16. So dealing with the 10th plague. Exodus 12, 29. At midnight, the Lord struck down all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh, who sat on his throne, to the firstborn of the captive who was in the dungeon, and all the firstborn of the livestock. And Pharaoh rose up in the night, he and all his servants and all the Egyptians. And there was a great cry in Egypt, for there was not a house where someone was not dead. Then he summoned Moses and Aaron by night and said, Up, go out from among my people, both you and the people of Israel, and go, serve the Lord, as you have said. Take your flocks and your herds, as you have said, and be gone, and bless me also. The Lord said to Moses, Consecrate to me all the firstborn, whatever is the first." to open the womb among the people of Israel, both of man and beast, is mine. Then Moses said to the people, Remember this day in which you came out from Egypt, out of the house of slavery, for by a strong hand the Lord brought you out from this place. No leavened bread shall be eaten. Today, in the month of Abib, you are going out and when the Lord brings you into the land of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Hivites, the Jebusites, which he swore to your fathers to give you a land flowing with milk and honey, you shall keep this service in this month. Seven days you shall eat of an unleavened bread. And on the seventh day there shall be a feast to the Lord. Unleavened bread shall be eaten for seven days. No leaven bread shall be seen with you, and no leaven shall be seen with you in all your territory. You shall tell your son on that day, It is because of what the Lord did for me when I came out of Egypt, and it shall be to you as a sign on your hand and as a memorial between your eyes, that the law of the Lord may be in your mouth. For with a strong hand the Lord has brought you out of Egypt. You shall therefore keep this statue, statute at its appointed time from year to year. When the Lord brings you into the land of the Canaanites, as he swore to you and your fathers, and shall give it to you, you shall set apart to the Lord all that first opens the womb. All the firstborn of your animals that are males shall be the Lord's. Every firstborn of a donkey you shall redeem with a lamb, or if you will not redeem it, you shall break its neck. Every firstborn of man among your sons you shall redeem. And when time to come, and, and when in time to come, your son asks you, what does this mean? You shall say to him, by a strong hand, the Lord brought us out of Egypt from the house of slavery. 
For when Pharaoh stubbornly, stubbornly refused to let us go, the Lord killed all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both the firstborn of man and the firstborn of animals. Therefore I sacrifice to the Lord all the males that first opened the womb, but all the firstborn of my sons I redeem. It shall be as a mark on your hand or frontlets between your eyes, but for by a strong hand the Lord brought us out of Egypt. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now I have to decide if we're going to meet tomorrow morning or if uh, as Christ rests in the tomb, Pastor rests. Um, and it keeps going. Oh, it's short tomorrow. Now we'll see what happens. The tenth plague comes at midnight in the depth of the night. Every firstborn in the land of Egypt from the firstborn of Pharaoh, the crown prince, if you will, or the, the heir apparent, um, through the firstborn of the man in the dungeon. Everyone who's was not in their home marked by the blood of the Passover lamb, which was wiped down to the doorposts and the lintels with a hyssop branch, died. Some say, how could God do this? God must not have done this. This must have been something else. But we are God's creatures. You, you must keep that in mind. You are not your own. You never have been. From the day you were born, from the moment you were conceived, even from the foundation of the worlds, God knew you. He knew who you were who you will be. He even knew what you would become. Not that, not that knowing is causation, right? Keep that in mind. God's foreknowledge is not predestination, right? Although he elected everyone, everyone for salvation, not everyone is saved. Well, how can that be if he elected everybody? Well, because he didn't make us automatons. And just because he knows what's going to happen doesn't mean he's the cause of it. Think of it this way. This is my, my favorite example. You're in the kitchen. You're in the kitchen and you're, and you're uh, cooking something on the range. And your child is in the kitchen with you, young yet. And you're on the far side of the kitchen and they march over to the oven and they raise their hand to put their hand on that hot burner on the top, you know what's going to happen. Are you the cause of it? When it happens, are you the cause of their putting the hand on the burner and burning themselves? Or did you just know what would happen? See what I'm saying? If you don't intercede, then you're a party to it, but you're not the cause of it. If you seek to intercede and they still burn themselves, you did your best. You're like the watchman on the tower in Ezekiel. You warned them. We are his creatures. We belong to him. And he can do with us as he pleases. Whether he wants to wipe out all but eight of us through a flood, whether he wants to allow war to take many of us away, plague or disease to, to uh, end many lives. He can do with us as he wills, as he will. The things you own, you do with as you will. It's your property. Who's to question you? Everything is his property. And certainly, as it is said, why would the pot, why would the pot think it has the authority to question the potter as to what he is doing? Job learned that, but we're not reading Job. So all of these who do not believe in God, all of these Egyptians who do not believe in God Most High, the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, do not trust in him. 
he has chosen as a sign to Israel, and or a sign to Egypt. Well, a sign to Israel too, but a sign to Egypt and a sign to the world of his authority over all things to kill, put to death the firstborn, not the entire household. The firstborn child of every house in the land of Egypt. And not just the people, but the animals as well. The firstborn animal of their livestock dies. Chickens, cattle, goats, donkeys, sheep. But not up in Goshen where the Israelites are. They're safe, marked by the blood of the Lamb. When this happens, the Lord says to Moses, consecrate to me all the firstborn, because he saved them. They have been saved. They're marked as his. They belong to the Lord. Even though as creatures they belong to the Lord, now he has acted to save them. And so they, even further, even more so, owe their lives to God. They must be, they must be bought back. They must be redeemed. An animal at the cost of a sheep, a donkey, or a sheep will break its neck but your sons you shall redeem. And so it is that when Jesus is born of Mary, being the first firstborn to open her womb, when they go up to the, to the synagogue and make their offering of two turtle doves, the poor man's offering uh, for a child who first opens the womb, Joseph redeems the Christ. He redeems Jesus, his son by guardianship, by adoption from the father. It happens with Samuel. Samuel is the firstborn of Hannah and Elkanah. And Hannah, having prayed to the Lord for a child, says she will give that child. This is further on in time, past where we are now. But Hannah prays to the Lord for a child, saying, telling the Lord that she will give that child, Samuel, into the service of the Lord if he but gives her a child. And so when they when when Samuel was born, although they go they go up to the temple, uh, they don't have to redeem him uh, because he is going to be given to the Lord in service. They redeem uh, the, the, and he's the firstborn. So the firstborn and this is this is to be told to the children and the children's children and all the generations that the firstborn belongs to the Lord, both man and beast, and must be redeemed. And remember this day. And I was wrong yesterday. I said the month of Nain, but it's the it's the month of Abib. Um, this day they are coming out of Egypt. On um, this very day, they will gather their things and leave Egypt. The Exodus. It is also on this very day that Jesus prepares for his Exodus. And by the strong arm of God's only begotten Son, His dearest, dear and beloved Son, He will free you from the house of slavery of sin. That's right. The Exodus, the entire Exodus, taking His people up out of the land of slavery in Egypt where they resided for 450 years is a foreshadowing of what Christ does upon the cross. He comes to take away your sin, not by being born in a manger, although that's part of it, not by spending three years preaching and teaching and healing the sick and the lame and casting out demons, not by changing water into wine or calling dead Lazarus out of the tomb, not by simply speaking to the people, but by his suffering at the hands of Pilate, his suffering at the hands of the priests, and I ask Caiaphas, the chief priests and scribes, but by his suffering and death upon the cross, his blood shed for you on Good Friday. This is where it happens. The Lamb of God, now sacrificed, for the forgiveness of sins. His blood shed for you, such that you would be removed from the house of slavery and brought into 
the promised land of life in him. Today, he dies for you. Amen. We look to our prayer of the day. Almighty God, graciously behold this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and delivered into the hands of sinful men, to suffer death upon the cross. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we are bold to pray as our Lord taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever and ever. Amen. And a prayer for this Good Friday especially. O Christ, Lamb of God, slain for the sin of the whole world, with a penitent heart I come to your cross, pleading for mercy and forgiveness. My sins, and they are many, have added to the burden of your suffering and have nailed you to the accursed tree. For me, you tasted the agony of utter darkness that I might not perish, but have everlasting life. Have mercy on me. O Christ, Lamb of God, embrace me with your love and forgive me all my sins. Your death brings healing to my soul, peace to my mind, cleansing to my heart. If you would mark iniquity, I could not come. For my hands are unclean, my lips are sullied, and my heart is blackened by sin. But beholding you bleeding, despised, forsaken, dying, pierced, I come to be cleansed and forgiven. O Christ, Lamb of God, grant that I may hate sin and wickedness more and more as I behold you in your great agony. My grateful heart today finds hope in your words, comfort in your promises and salvation in your finished work on the cross, by which you have overcome sin, Satan, and death. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, hear my prayer. Amen. Lord, even on this day, we ask that you give comfort to those who suffer, especially this day, those for whom we pray and have asked for our prayers. Peter, Karen, Olive, James, Pat, Lois, Don, Brianne, Ashley, and all who call upon your most holy name, knowing that by your grace they receive healing where it is your good and gracious will and comfort where the end draws near. We ask this in the name of you who are our merciful Lord, even Christ who died on the cross for us. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end. That our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself 
my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me. The evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, my friends, that brings our devotions for this Good Friday to a close. I pray God's blessings upon you today and all days. I invite you, urge you, adjure you, uh, if possible, to get to your congregation today or a congregation near you to celebrate uh, and to hear uh, the preaching of the cross where Christ was killed and died for you such that on Easter morning that cry of he is risen means all the more. God's peace be with you and we will see you. Yeah, we'll see you tomorrow morning. God's peace. If I can find the right button. Ah, where'd it go? Oh, right there. God's peace.